Question 16 from Section 1 of the 2019 Higher Physics Examination. A photon of energy 6.40 times 10 to minus 19 joules is incident on a metal plate. This causes the photoemission to take place. The work function of the metal is 4.20 times 10 to minus 19 joules. The maximum speed of the photoelectron is, and you're given the five choices. Taking a look at our data sheet of equations, you can see that the kinetic energy of the photoelectron emitted can be found from HF minus HF naught. That is the energy of the photon, take away the work function. Remember, the work function is the minimum amount of energy needed to release an electron from the surface. And the photon has energy more than that work function. So therefore, you'll get some excess energy appearing as kinetic energy of the photoelectron. So our first move then is to work out that kinetic energy. And we use the equation here. So we put down Ek is equal to the energy of the photon, Hf, which we know. Take away Hf0 which is the work function of the metal. So putting the numbers in, we have Ek is going to equal to Hf, which is 6.40 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Take away the work function, which is 4.20 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So if we do that subtraction, we get the kinetic energy to be 2.20 times 10 to minus 19 joules. Now, that's the kinetic energy, but we need to find the speed of the photoelectron. But we do know that the kinetic energy, a half mv squared, is going to equal to the kinetic energy Ek. Now, we have got to try and extricate from that equation the velocity v. So, we just take our time. We see a half on the left-hand side, so we double everything, multiplying by 2 throughout, and we get mv squared is going to equal to 2 times the kinetic energy. Dividing by m all the way throughout, we get v squared equals 2 times the kinetic energy, divided by the mass of the photoelectron. And finally, the speed of the electron itself, we must take the square root of double the kinetic energy, ek, divided by m. And that gives us the speed of the photoelectron. We know the kinetic energy, and we need to know, finally, the mass of the photoelectron. Well, the mass of the photoelectron, if I can bring this over here, is equal to 9.11 times 10 to minus 31 kilograms. So now we're in a position to work out the speed of that photoelectron. We'll do it here. Speed V equals 2 times Ek, so 2 times 2.20, times 10 to the minus 19 joules, put a bracket around that, divided by the mass of the photoelectron, which was 9.11 times 10 to minus 31. And remember, it's the square root of all that. So when we do that in our calculator, we end up with a answer of 6.95 times 10 to the power 5 meters per second. So that will be the speed of the photoelectron. Question 17 from Section 1 of the 2019 Higher Physics Examination. Waves from two coherent sources, S1 and S2, produce an interference pattern. Maxima are detected at the position shown. The wavelength of the waves is 28 millimetres. For the third minimum at P, the path difference S2 to P minus S1P is, and we're given our five choices. Now, once you get a interference pattern, you know where the maximas occur in terms of path difference. So if I just write up here a little table showing you the path differences, PDEs, path differences. Now we know for the central maximum, there's going to be no path difference. We know for the first maximum, is going to be a path difference of one wavelength. For the second maximum here, it's going to be two wavelengths. And for the third maximum, it's going to be three wavelengths. Now, what about the minimums, which I'll do in red here? A minimum occurs here. That's the first minimum. Now, the first minimum is going to occur when the path difference between S1P and S2P is half a wavelength. And I'm writing it like this, half a wavelength. The second minimum 
will occur when the path difference is 1.5 wavelengths. And the third minimum, which we're looking for, will occur when the path difference is 2.5 wavelengths. Now that's a pattern we have to remember. So from our diagram, we know that the path difference, I'll just write it like this, path difference, which we know is equal to S2P take away S1P. So what is the path difference in this case? The path difference is going to be 2.5 wavelengths to the third minimum. But we know what a wavelength is, is 28 millimetres. So therefore, we have the path difference, S2P, take away S1P, the path difference must be equal to 2.5 wavelengths, which is 2.5 times 28 millimetres. So we work that out in our calculator, we get an answer of 70 millimetres. So the path difference between S2P and S1P must be 70 millimetres which is answer C.